What's up everybody, Jackson here, and today I just want to talk a little bit about Blizzard Entertainment and what's what's happened to them and <laughs> where who they were when I first was introduced to their games and who they are now. And I just, I'm curious about where the passion went, though I'm not really curious. And in this video I'm going to kind of examine the things that, in my opinion, have made them a worse company. A, a less innovative company, a more safe, practiced, you know, hand of delivering, like, technically exceptional games and raking in billions from them now, at this point in time. Like, Overwatch has cleared a billion dollars, right? That, that's massive amount of money, and that's not even including the microtransaction numbers, right? We don't have any idea, really, in actuality, how much money this has garnered overhead profit off of sales and microtransactions in the game, right? Which obviously do very well, because there's a huge portion of people who just love that market. They want to buy random chances. They want to buy skins for characters. They want to buy loot for characters that you can only get in an RNG type fashion, right? The casino effect, they love it. There's a whole group of YouTubers dedicated to doing nothing but opening these things, okay? Going back to Team Fortress 2. And that is why Overwatch exists, right? Like, I mean, it's it's the same way that they rolled out the story. This is something I didn't even realize until recently, because I never really played, I never played Team Fortress 2. I never had a PC when it during its boom, during its popularity. Now that I have one, I just don't give a fuck to play it because I know that it's like Overwatch, and honestly, Overwatch just ain't my cup of tea. So, but that said, Overwatch isn't a bad game, right? Like, let me get that out of the way right now. Like, I have tons of friends who play Overwatch. I've seen, like, competitive style gameplay. I've changed my opinion on the game. I definitely see that there's, you know, it is incredibly important for you to be playing in the competitive modes, to be playing a team of, you know, good characters that balance each other out with support, heals, blah, etc., etc., with the damage, you know, the killers, the assassins. So, I understand that there definitely is a, you know, a, very complex nature to this game however there's a huge amount of simplicity in it as well and recently i picked up the battle chest starcraft 2 battle chest previously i'd only been able to play the wings of liberty campaign and the wings of liberty campaign that i was able to play was on a pc that sucked ass and so i didn't get like the moving portraits it looked like shit it ran really awful the, you know i'd be moving in to go and attack an enemy base and there'd be too many units on the screen and it would just kind of shit out so that said, I still enjoyed it because the cutscenes obviously ran well. Blizzard cutscenes have always ran really well. But just, you know, the way that game, you know, the Wings of Liberty had, you know, presented itself to me. I mean, sure, at the end, I was kind of mad that there wasn't a Zerg campaign or protest campaign. But I wasn't mad because I felt at the time I was like, well, as long as they do it that long and that, you know, like that cool, like with the hub and the ship and you go and you talk to people and upgrade trees and different choices you can make throughout the, you know, the course of the campaign, giving it more than one playthrough, which actually on this, when I picked up the battle chest and replayed it, I did like different things than I remembered doing and it was cool. It was, you know, it added a little new fresh experience to it from what I'd already played, you know, all these years later. But while I'm playing this, I've, I start to play with my brother. We get into co-op. My brother has a copy of it. We get into co-op and I'm looking and I'm seeing all of these like these commanders that you can only buy with real life money for five bucks a pop that limit your units. You know, like, you can only use these units if you have this character. And these units are units that are in the base game that you can build and play with on the base game. So it's a question of... Uh, it's just another one of those acty tricks of, you know, putting content that you already own behind a paywall and making you buy it again. And then they've got all these announcers and, like, you know, things... It's just whatever. Gratuitous bullshit for people who want to spend extra money on StarCraft 2 because they're playing it a lot. But I was looking at that and I was thinking in my mind, I was just like, wow. And so I went over and I, you know, I downloaded Heroes of the Storm and I started to play it. And all of the, you know, the loot boxes and everything just felt, felt like Overwatch. And I was like, eh, you know, and I did the, as far as the game went, I, I didn't like the way it controlled. It didn't, I, you know, and I'm that's the thing is I'm not a, you know, by any means <laughs> am I good at playing with a mouse and keyboard in a, like a Dota League of Legends style game format. So that said, you know, I wasn't very good at it. I don't really care for it. I didn't even like League of Legends. I played League of Legends a lot because my little brother was fucking awesome at it and was like, he'd play carry, I'd play support, and we'd go duo lane and we always won our lane, like no matter what. And so, 
that's why I like League of Legends. That was my introduction to MOBAs was League of Legends. But moving past that, I, I just noticed there's so many things to buy and it just feels like a cash machine. Like it just, it doesn't even feel an innovative experience. Like to me personally, from the little time I spent in the Heroes of the Storm, I felt like the attention was always on getting me to look at skins, getting me to look at these things, these things. Even when we play bots, like the bots had skins, and none of them made fucking sense. Some of them just honestly straight up made me angry, but I'm not going to talk about that because that's like a little portion of nerd rage that is irrational and stupid for me to be like, can't have him dressed up like that? What the fuck is that? I think the one I saw that made me the maddest was the Asmodan one and he was like in a beach suit or something It was like your typical, you know, MOBA fucking stupid skin that people love to buy But it was just on a character that's very, you know, imposing and foreboding and it's just, I was like, what the fuck? Uh. <laughs> anyway, there were a lot of skins like that. I can't think of any of them right now This is about a week ago that I played it, but just instances like that where I was like, wow, this is just cheap, petty cash grabbery, you know what I mean? And I think that what happened, and like, the back to Overwatch, like I said, it, it doesn't, it's the same sort of thing to me, personally. I see the intricacies of the gameplay, and I see that in Heroes of the Storm too, and I see like, the, you know, they did innovate it in a way, and they added it, like, these little team activities that you have to go and do and hit objectives as a team, that, you know, and it's not all about the lane push, which me personally i didn't like as much because i just didn't like that there were so many of those things and like attack a boss and then whoever attacks it first pretty much is gonna lose right because they're gonna be taking the damage from the boss when the other team rolls up on them blah 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 anyway th I, I but i see the you know there's still there's evolution there's you know things in overwatch things in heroes of the storm I just, a hearthstone i tried to play i couldn't be i just i didn't care about it at all i already talked about it in another video it just feels like blase, you know, here's a card game for you that is safe and will make money is simple enough for anyone to pick up, but complex enough, just complex enough for there to be an endgame meta and keep people hardcore, you know, hardcore people interested in the endgame of the card game by our expansions and blah, 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 blah. Okay. All that said, I think what's happened is there's a big influence at Blizzard that wasn't there, you know, X amount of years ago, and that's Activision. Okay. And Activision, they want money, all right? That's it. Like, they don't give a shit about delivering good games. They want to deliver safe games that will make them money, right? Like, that's the point of them investing money in a company like Bungie for their game is if you, you know, this is it. Like, you're going to have, we want this game to make money. This has to be a money-making machine. And so, you know, X amount of years later, now the Destiny 2 is coming out. It's going to have microtransactions day one. We all know that. It's going to have, you know, little stupid novelty, you know, cosmetic items that are just, you know, vanity bullshit items for people to feel better about their digital character in this digital game. This is, you know, whatever. People are going to dump hundreds of thousands of dollars onto these things, right? They're going to make all of the money that they need to make off of just those. They could literally give Destiny 2 away for free and still make money, but they won't. Okay, and it's the same reason that Modern Warfare 4 or whatever one it was that everyone was excited for the remaster, why it was locked behind Infinite Warfare, why it then when it was, you know, out, they retroactively add microtransaction into a game that's so many years old. There's a great gym acquisition on it. I will have it below. Excellent fucking video, dude. He just goes into how shady and slimy that is and we're seeing it over and over again. Now we're seeing it with Bethesda with their paid mods that are, you know, they're definitely paid mods, their creation club stuff. Those are obviously there to put in the game and who knows if Sony's really blocking mod support or if Bethesda just is like, you know what? If we take away the free mods from the console people and then charge them money for these micro mods, they'll pay it for it. They'll buy it because they look at all these numbers from Destiny. They look at all these numbers from other games like, you know, Smite, free, you know, free to play games all of the money that microtransactions are netting these companies these companies you know they are seeing the bottom line across the board they're able to look at these things they have analysts saying okay this is trending make seven more fucking of these all right and so when i hear blizzard entertainment is hiring people 
and it's leading to the basically the possibility of a Diablo 2 remaster or a Diablo remaster or a StarCraft I mean StarCraft 2 is already being remastered if it's not out or StarCraft 1 is already being remastered if it's not out already all right Warcraft 2 remaster Warcraft 3 remaster all of these games that they can just go in you know update servers blah 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 I am so so 100% positive that these things are going to have microtransactions like those that we see in StarCraft 2. Whether it's just vanity, you know, like announcer packs for, you know, having someone else say, oh, your pylon, you know, need more pylons, blah, 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 insufficient materials, blah, blah, blah. Anyone can do that. It's stupid. It's a dumb thing to charge money for. It's, I just... You know, it doesn't matter who says that, but that's just something that, you know, here's an excessive thing that you can buy if you want. And I don't really mind those things, but when you get into like these $5 commander packs that lock off units to the character, lock off hero characters to the, you know, the player, and then you play like, it, to me it started in the Heart of the Swarm is when I started to feel it the most, is when you were, you there was like spotlights shining on these characters that were then available to buy for five bucks. You know what I mean? And then it's just, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like <sighs> that said, that said, that's the reason I believe that if they do go back and they remaster these games, they're going to do something like Bethesda has done with the fucking Skyrim remaster. And you know what they've, what Activision has already done with the modern warfare remaster. They're going to go back they're gonna remaster this game for super cheap, sell it for a fucking triple A price, fucking, if not a triple A price, $40, you know, whatever they're gonna charge for it. And then on top of that, they're gonna retroactively outfit these things with a microtransaction system that's constantly incentivizing the player to buy it. And this is this is the problem I have with Activision, okay? Is because they're making these triple A titles that are, you know supposed to be new experiences supposed to be new games that are you know evolving and you know adding on to the genre adding on to this fucking you know evolution machine but there's this money and it just fucking grinds those wills to a halt all right because they don't want progress they don't want anyone trying anything new they don't want new game mechanics they don't want new style of graphic they don't want any of that what they want is safe what will make them money and so they take the top you know and at this point in time as much as i like overwatch i really wish that it wasn't one of the top earning video games of all time like i really honestly wish that overwatch hadn't made as much money as it did all right i'm not trying to begrudge the game anything or anything like that i'm just saying that because of that and in fact fucking fuck that i wish team fortress had two hadn't been as big as it was all right i wish that these sorts of online only competitive arena games were we're only making the money like they do in the microtransactions. The only that, like, I don't think that these AAA games that ship with like these free to play sort of things in there that are automatically grifting the player towards buying things, you know, like, here, come here, you know, buy this. Some shady dude in a fucking trench coat in an alleyway. Look, want to watch? You are, <laughs> in future, I'm want to buy a kidney. Anyway, moving past that, what I'm saying is. Is that these games should feel like a new experience but when i start to play these games like from blizzard these new games like hearthstone the heroes of the storm uh fucking so many of them so even now starcraft 2 you know overwatch when i play these games i feel like there's a you know there's a the point of the game is to sell me more shit all right I, I can't explain it any better than that. And maybe it's just because I'm old, I'm cynical, and I don't see the fun to be had. And, you know, and I'm not I'm not trying to say that I don't see the fun to be had in Overwatch. Like, I'll probably pick Overwatch up at some point when it goes on sale. I'm sorry, I'm not gonna pay sixty fucking dollars for you know, or forty or fifty. I'm gonna be I'm gonna pay maybe twenty dollars for Overwatch because in my opinion, that's what Overwatch is worth. If I could get a copy of Overwatch for twenty and under, maybe I'd buy it. But to pay that price for an online only game where if my internet shits out, I, it doesn't do anything for me. Or if I had bought it on the PS4, if I don't pay my, you know, subscription fee with these, these DRM shit out the ass. All over the place on every game. Sony's getting worse and worse with it to the point now where they're saying, fuck, you know, we're not going to do cross-platform play anymore. We're not doing it because they just want all of the money, right? 
And I'm going to have a video on that, just on Sony and how they're not going to be able to match with the, you know, they want, they say we want to compete with the PC, but they are fucking behind in the fucking Stone Age when it comes to just the Steam storefront and the interface available to the, you know, consumer there. So they're, they're in the consumer and the creator of the content. All right, they're, they're fucking years and years behind. They're like in the fucking stone age. They think they're gonna compete, especially if they keep doing pull and shit like this, no cr cross platform play. That eventually you're gonna have games that are not being going to be able to be played on the PS4 or whatever fucking the pro or whatever your new console is in, here in a year. But whatever, you're not going to have people, enough people to play that game. And those people are going to know, to they're just going to Google it or whatever. And they're going to come to the knowledge that if they were playing on the PC, they would be playing with people on the mic, on the fucking Xbox. They'd be playing with people on the Switch. Anyway, not going to turn this into a Sony video. I'm going to have a whole video on that. Just Stone Age, all right? But that's the thing about Overwatch. I'm not going to pay that sort of money for that. I'm not going to, you know, or if Blizzard servers go down, well, I'm fucked. Or, you know, like, I, I you know, I'm not, I'm going to pay $60 price. I'm going to want a game that I can play whether I'm online or offline. I'm going to want a game that, you know, is a, has a full story campaign. Honestly, if it has multiplayer, that's just an incentive for me to buy it on top of the multi already, you know, like good campaign. So... That, it's like doom like I didn't buy doom like I could have bought doom several times by this point on sale right but I had played the, I played through the campaign twice I'm not interested in the multiplayer I, there's no need for me to own that game you know what I mean and so that said blizzard back going back to blizzard I think the activision's hands are apparent as shit I think it's just as obvious as it is with bungie as it is with, you know, Infinity Ward or whoever the fuck, anyone else that they're doing business with, that Activision is doing business with, once you get their games, and whether, you know, you can tell the spotlight is on one, the focus is on one area, and that one area's focus is on microtransactions. And I think if we see a remastered Diablo 2, I think we'll see it, you know, retroactively outfitted with microtransactions same with warcraft 2 same with warcraft 3 same with all those games i think we'll see some sort of updated co-op format that involves all sorts of new things you can buy whether it be you know cosmetic or actual units and commanders it's just the sad fact and this, you know and this is not just a thing that blizzard does i mean I, there's plenty of rts's that do it that lock off entire factions for extra money as dlc you know all sorts of stuff like that happens all the time but with activision it's just a certainty and it's just it's i find it really sad that you know my first introduction to blizzard warcraft 2 man just playing that demo at my cousin's house my cousin had this demo for warcraft 2 and i literally think it was the first two human levels was it and i played those over and over again when i was there probably spent five or six hours on just the demo when i finally got my own copy there was a kid that i used to hang out with when i was younger his name was brandon i or yeah i'm not gonna say his last name it's probably not a good call anyway he he you know this was back in the day when we would play online like i had to call his modem and like put a number in mine and we'd connect like a phone call you know what i mean and we would play warcraft 2 for days and he would kick my ass but what you know he ended up doing because he was just so much better than me i was never very good at the multiplayer in rts's i kind of like to just take my time and enjoy playing the game you know what i mean i like those levels where you have to defend for a while while you build an army and then you get your big ass army and your units you know and you go at them the way that you've planned it you know in different directions anyway moving past that so what we would do is we'd you know turn on the ally or the ai and we just you know he'd make us maps where it'd be us versus like three or four of them and since he was so good he'd carry me through it but it was such a good time to playing diablo one with him you know the same way going down through the dungeons he actually gave me a i think there was some sort of way you could give your friend a code or something for it he like patched it something like that i don't remember i was not a technical guy then i'm not a technical guy now but he did something to where he was able to get me a copy of it and that it was just a blast man and the, just even playing starcraft 2 and these cutscenes in it that are just so interesting and intricate and like this story that's evolving then you just go to their newest project overwatch which yeah like i said is good it's good but there's no cutscenes in the game there's no story really in the game aside from like that opening one 
uh, the, the universe, it doesn't make sense. Like, I, 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 I just, you know, maybe you'd, you could explain it to me more, but as, like, a casual person who just kind of looks at it, I, I could barely know anything about StarCraft, and I could understand the universe, you know what I mean? With just a couple of sentences. You'd have to do a really hard time of explaining the intricacies of, you know, the Overwatch, because it's all on the forums, and, you know, in cutscenes released on YouTube, and it's, it's just this this new way of delivering story to keep you going to all these different websites so that you keep your player retention up and it's just i don't know it's good business but in my opinion it's not good games i'm not saying overwatch isn't a good game i just say it's an overpriced game like definitely overpriced for what it is and what it does and you know like what it delivers and it's content and it, you know it's just i feel like it's under it's an underwhelming project for someone like blizzard for the people behind, you know, World of Warcraft. People behind some of the greatest stories that I personally have ever heard. And like, you know, the, some of the greatest universes that I've ever, you know, felt privileged to be a part of. Even for just, you know, the moment of suspension of the, you know, belief. It's, it's, it's hard to believe that Overwatch is the same product of those people. And I think that there's a reason for that. And that it's it's not the same product of those people. It's the same product of those people. And now, Activision. The hand in the pocket. The, you know, the hand in the, you know, the dough. The extra person in the kitchen who's just giving out asinine advice that means nothing. That's only going to fuck up dinner. That weird fucking relative that nobody wants at the party. That fucking guy. Him and Blizzard are making the games now. And so I, I think we'll see definitely remasters. <laughs> it makes sense. Like I said in the Bethesda video, it's easy, it's cheap to do, and it you know, people will buy it. People will buy it. It'll say Blizzard on it and people will buy it. I mean fuck, I'll buy it. If they did a Warcraft 3 remaster, I would probably buy it, right? <sighs> it's this shitty, shitty, shitty feeling knowing that just the things that I've loved have come to this. <laughs> and, you know, but there's, a, it's, who knows? It could always change. They could, you know, get better. I don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully, hopefully enough people just stop rewarding that sort of thing. But as, as it stands right now, like Overwatch is a colossal giant. It's at the top of the game. It's making the most money. And so I think we're just going to see a lot more dumbed down safe, you know, material. Just, you know, just simple things that have already been done, tried, tested, and true that will make money and pretty colors. <laughs> pretty colors and motions to buy. Pretty colors and motions for sale. Activision. <laughs> anyway, guys, that's it for me. Jackson, I'm out of here. I love you. Till next time, stay safe, stay awesome, keep kicking ass, and as always, remember that... The sun will come out tomorrow. Bet your bottom dollar, motherfucker, that tomorrow there'll be sun. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> Talk to y'all later.